Carpal tunnel syndrome. A couple of years ago, I got a really bad case of it. I was spending hours sitting at my desk writing blog posts and articles, and I was using a cheap, small budget mouse. It got so bad that I got pains in my hand and RSI all the way up to my shoulder, and I wasn't able to sit at my desk for more than an hour or two. Now, the symptoms relieved when I started mixing up typing at a keyboard and using a cheap mouse with dictation and going for walks to bang out those first drafts with a dictaphone. However, I still needed a mouse to use when it was time to edit articles or perhaps publish them on my blog. So that caused me to wonder, what's the best mouse out there for writers? My name is Brian Collins and you're watching the Become A Writer Today channel. And in this video, I'm gonna profile not one, but eight different options that you could consider if you're wondering about the same thing. I bought all of these eight options because firstly, I'm a little bit nerdy. And secondly, I really did want to figure out what's the best device out there. And thirdly, I like having new gadgets. Let's dive in. Now, before we go through each of my eight selections, there's a few things to consider. So firstly, look at your setup. I actually changed my desk from a sit desk to a sit stand desk, and this enabled me to put my arm in a different position. Now, I realize that not every writer will be able to do this, but it can help relieve the symptoms of RSI. Secondly, consider the size of your hand. That's right, the size of your hand. Because as you're about to see, some mice are meant for people with smaller hands and some are meant for people with larger hands. And what I found is that smaller mice or low profile mice aggravated the symptoms because my hand would form a type of a claw, whereas larger mice suited my particular hand. And I know other writers and creatives who say they hate larger mice because they find them really heavy to move around their desk. Depending on what type of symptoms you're experiencing, I'd also recommend that you augment your writing desk with a gel wrist pad. I use these with the selections that I'm about to show you, and it does help if I'm writing for hours at a time, or if I'm just using my mouse for hours at a time as part of my daily workflow. The first mouse I tried came when I upgraded my computer. I bought a new iMac a few years ago, and I got one of these with it, the Apple Magic Mouse. Now this will cost you about 70 or 80 dollars to buy up front, and it's a pretty nice, elegant looking device. And of course it has touch gestures as well. So you can kind of use it like you would a touchpad. And of course it plays well with Mac peripherals. I really wanted to love this mouse, but to be honest, it just aggravated the case of carpal tunnel syndrome and RSI that I was experiencing. Remember what I said about the size of your hand and the profile of a mouse? Well, because this is a low profile, lightweight mouse, I found that my hand formed a type of a claw when I was moving this around the desk and I just couldn't transition from a traditional mouse to using this particular device. So after a couple of weeks when my RSI really flared up, I gave away this mouse and let my son use it. Now every now and again, I do borrow it from him to see if perhaps I could work it into my workflow again, but I just can't take to this mouse. I know some creatives like it, but personally, it's not for me. While we're on the subject of Apple devices, I also have an Apple trackpad. It's a particularly good trackpad to use if you're used to working and editing and writing on a laptop. Now I found that I'm comfortable writing at a laptop and using the trackpad on my MacBook for a couple of hours, but I didn't find that this was a good replacement for a traditional mouse. Perhaps that's because my keyboard is larger and my desk is set up differently. But again, I found myself missing a traditional device. And even though you can pick up one of these for a little less than the price of an Apple Magic Mouse, I tried using it to replace a mouse with no avail. Then I tried using it alongside a normal mouse so I could get access to all of those fancy touch features and I just found it was a bit of a distraction. So I put it in the box in my office and I haven't taken it out since. Logitech make really good peripherals. Say hello to the Logitech Ergo or Ergonomic 575. It costs a little less than an Apple Magic Mouse. So you have your two standard buttons as well as a button for scrolling up and down and two side buttons for going backwards and forwards. And this mouse works a little bit differently to your standard mouse. So instead of having a laser that you will move around on your desk or on your touchpad, you'll instead use this ball here to control your cursor with your thumb. Now at first I liked this mouse. I found it fit the shape of my hand quite nicely. It's the right size and the right weight for me. Now for context, I'm six foot, so I hope that helps you figure out what size mouse you should use. However, I found that after a couple of days of using this mouse, I kept trying to move the mouse like a traditional device. 
and I couldn't transition to controlling the cursor with my thumb by moving this ball here. After some time, I did eventually make the transition, but I did notice that I started to get some slight pain on the side of my hand. It wasn't anything like the pain I got from using the Apple Magic mouse, but I never really felt comfortable with this mouse. And after a couple of weeks of use, I put it away to try a different device. I experimented with using a couple of different rollerball mice from Microsoft and other companies. I eventually bought this one, and to be honest, this is the best rollerball mouse on the market. It's from Kensington, and it's called the Kensington Rollerball, and it's not cheap. It's going to cost you over $150. This is quite a heavy ball. It reminded me a little bit of a snooker ball. And you can actually plop this into the mouse and then move it around like this or with one of your fingers. It has four buttons that you can press, and it even has a detachable wrist pad to give yourself a little bit of support should you need it. Now, I really like this mouse, and unlike some of the other rollerball mice that I tried, it worked quite well with my iMac and with my Apple computer. And of course, it works perfectly well on Windows too. And it even has a little dial that you can spin around when you need to scroll upwards and downwards on your application. And there are even options in the Kensington app for customizing how each of the four buttons, as well as the scroll wheel, works. So why didn't I keep using this mouse? Well, firstly, I wanted to try some of the other mice that I'm about to show you. And secondly, I still found that although this was really nice to use, it was just a little bit slower than using a traditional mouse. So I played around with the acceleration and with the speed of the scroll wheel using the Kensington app, but I still found it would take me a couple of seconds longer to complete the same tasks that I would complete with a traditional mouse. Now, if I had no other option, apart from the device I'm gonna show you in a few moments, this is probably the device that I would use the most to alleviate the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome or RSI. For year two, I used a Logitech MX Master II. It was a great mouse, it was the perfect weight and perfect profile for my hand. It had seven fully customizable buttons and the software worked great with Mac OS. And I also particularly liked the look and feel of the device. And I didn't get any RSI or carpal tunnel syndrome symptoms while using this particular device. So why did I stop using it? Well, unfortunately, there was some sort of software issue with this particular mouse. I have lots of different devices connected to my iMac over Bluetooth and I found that one of these devices, I was never able to figure out which one, was conflicting with the mouse. So I'd go to move it across the screen and the cursor would shake or not quite catch up with my hand movement. The whole issue became so frustrating that I contacted Logitech support. They gave me a number of steps to work through and even gave me a replacement mouse, but I still couldn't fix the issue. I spent hours browsing forums online and reading Reddit threads and I found that this is a common issue for Mac users. That said, if you're on Windows, you could probably pick up one of these mice on a discount today because it's been out for a few years. And it really is a great device that you can customize to your workflow. So when I had to give up my trusty Logitech MX Master, I turned to a different type of mouse altogether. I bought a Razer gaming mouse. That's right, a gaming mouse. Now I don't play games on my iMac, but I bought a Razer mouse because they are ergonomic you can adjust the weight of them by putting weights in or by taking weights out of the mouse and they were a reasonably good fit for the shape of my hand. And you can even change the look and feel and the lights on your mouse and of course the buttons are customizable. Now the Razer mice tend to be wired so they have a faster response rate for gamers. That doesn't really make much of a difference to the rest of us but it is something to consider. And the Razer gaming mice are not cheap. My one costs a little under $100 which is a lot to pay for a gaming mouse. And the mouse worked pretty much without issue. I was able to use it without experiencing many of the symptoms that I get, including carpal tunnel syndrome and RSI. The mouse was reasonably customizable on Mac, even though the Razer proprietary software didn't quite work, work as expected most or all of the time. However, I had no real issues with this mouse and I really liked it. I liked it so much that I used it for an entire year before giving it away. I also tried the Logitech vertical mouse. It cost me a little over $100 to pick one of these up. And it works pretty much like a horizontal mouse, except you're going to flip your hand like this. And now you're going to move the mouse around your desk or around your mouse pad as if it were a type of joystick from a 1980s video game. Now I really like this mouse. As mentioned before, Logitech makes some great peripherals. It fit my hand perfectly and the weight was pleasing. And I didn't have any issues with RSI or carpal tunnel syndrome while using this particular device. And I also liked that I was able to customize it perfectly using the software that comes bundled for Mac. 
and it works great on Windows too. The only reason why I stopped using this mouse was Logitech released a new device which I couldn't wait to try. But I'd have no problems recommending this particular device to anybody who perhaps wants to move away from a traditional mouse but isn't quite sure about using a roller ball. And suffice to say, Microsoft do make some variations of the Logitech vertical mouse that you can try too, which are also quite good. Logitech released the new version of the MX Master. Say hello to the MX Master 3. Pretty similar to the MX Master 2, it has seven buttons which are fully customizable, although the placement and what the buttons do is a little bit different to the MX Master 2. Now, I was less interested in what the buttons do or what I was able to do with them, then whether or not this mouse would actually work properly on my Mac. And I loved my old Logitech mouse so much that I wanted to give this one a new go. And to my delight, I found that this mouse worked particularly well with my new Mac computer. There were no issues over Bluetooth or with the dongle that Logitech provided. I've had this mouse for a year and I've had no issues with it since. I have it set up to work in different ways in different writing applications, and I haven't got carpal tunnel syndrome or RSI. Costing over $100, this mouse is not cheap. But because I'm not getting RSI or carpal tunnel syndrome symptoms, I don't have to lose any time because of my setup. And if I were to recommend one mouse to you from this video, it's the new Logitech MX Master Mouse. And thankfully, all of those Bluetooth or connectivity issues that plagued previous devices seem to have been resolved with this latest version. There are a couple of other options out there that you can try. So Microsoft have a suite of ergonomic keyboards and mice that are pretty good too. And in my companion video on this channel where I profile the best keyboards, I go into detail about Microsoft's ergonomic keyboard. Now because I'm on a Mac, I don't use Microsoft devices that much, even though they do work with an Apple computer. However, if I was on a Windows computer, I probably would seriously consider buying the Microsoft Sculpt keyboard because it comes with an ergonomic mouse, also known as the Microsoft Sculpt mouse. It's specifically designed, or should I say both peripherals are specifically designed to resolve many of the issues that I've described in this video. My only real concern with the Sculpt mouse is the size of it. From looking at the profile on the Microsoft Store, it struck me as a little bit small. So I'd actually need to buy and test this mouse. But to be honest, I love the Logitech MX Master mouse so much and it works across all of my devices that I really would be pressed to switch. After all, as you've seen, I've spent hundreds of dollars buying lots of different types of mice over the years to get to the bottom of RSI and carpal tunnel syndrome. What mice are you using as part of your writing workflow? Let me know in the comments section below this video. And if you'd like to read or learn more about any of these devices, I do have an article that I'll link to in the notes as well. And to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.